we want to talk a little bit about the concept of darshan. Darshanam means to see. We go to the temple, we have darshanam of the deity. And when we go to the Swami or the Guruji, we have darshanam of the Swami. This means that we see him, but it means that he sees us also. It's not just physical sight with the eyes, but it's a mystical exchange of energy from the third eye. Those who have subtle perception, subtle awareness, because they've been meditating, can feel this darshanam as an energy, as a blessing coming to them. And people go to the Guru and they bow before the Guru because it humbles them. And they give up ego. They leave their faults at the feet of the Guru, they say, because they bow themselves and they touch the feet of the Guru. And they say that energy flows out through a person, through their feet. And so from the Guru, or even the priest in the temple who's been chanting all the Veda mantras, the blessings flow out through the feet because they have blessings to flow because the Shakti of God is with them, because they've been doing the sadhana, they've been chanting the mantras, they've been doing the dhyanams, the meditations. So when we humble ourselves, we leave some of that ego and we receive some of that blessing, but we've got to make ourselves open. We've got to make ourselves like an empty bowl. This is one mudra that helps us to become open. You just cup your palms. People sit like this in meditation. And when you go to a guru and you're waiting to have the darshan, this is a good mudra to practice because it makes you like an empty bowl to receive the grace and the blessings. So when you go to the guru, the guru is in a state of consciousness different than the normal body consciousness. He's been doing the spiritual practices that draw his consciousness up into the higher chakras. And he's looking and speaking and acting from the place of the higher chakras. And so when we look at the guru, we can see a little bit of what he sees. The world looks different to him because he's looking inwardly. He's looking at the world out from the inside. He's there in the inside looking outward. And we are as if we are outside looking within. So when we go to the Guru, we start to see more. Also, when we go to the Guru and we bow, or if we don't bow, that's very telling as well. As we bow, the Guru sees our resistances. He sees our karmas. He sees our hesitation. He sees the nature of that. <coughs> A guru looks and by looking at a person, a person feels like the guru is looking through them, looking into their soul. The guru looks and he sees their past. The guru looks and he sees their future and he sees the nature of their thoughts and their consciousness. He looks at their aura. He sees their inner aura. He sees the colors there. And the colors there tell him what spiritual practices this person has been doing and what spiritual practices they need to be doing. The Guru may see some troubles coming for the devotees and the Guru does things to help the devotee bring about the energy they need to avoid such karmas. As the Guru has this higher awareness he sees because he doesn't care, he doesn't judge. If we don't judge we too can see things about other people but if we judge, it limits what we can see. So without judgment from a place of higher consciousness, the Guru looks onto the person and the person starts to see what's in their subconscious mind, hidden from their conscious awareness, and their consciousness expands also. So some emotions may come out from the subconscious. It can be like a purging process when a person goes and has the darshan of a Guru. Before the fact, after the, the interaction also, we can have some subconscious purging. Feelings come up, we feel afraid, we feel angry, we feel scared. And it's a part of that process. They say we should take some time after meeting a guru to process that experience before we judge that experience. The darshan can be very different from different teachers, different swamis and gurus. You go to some... And you may feel very joyous and blissful. 
You go to others and it may be an intense purging. You go to others and it's barely perceptible. My first guru, he was in meditation a lot of the time and he was so much drawn inward that most people wouldn't even feel any shakti from this guru. They would not, it, his darshan was so inward and so subtle it was barely perceptible. But it surely worked on a person. Some people, they get in the presence of a guru and they just start to cry because these things are just purging or sometimes it just seems so beautiful. We don't judge any of that. We just let these experiences flow. But we don't have to be in the physical presence <coughs> of a guru either to have darshan because we can look at the photo of the guru. Or if we have an audio recording of the guru or a video of the guru, and we look at that and we have devotion, when we look at that with attention, we connect to the energy of the Guru at that moment. So right now I am having your darshan, you who is watching this video, and you are having my darshan. So you may feel something, you may not feel something. And that's okay, you don't need to judge the experience, but this is what darshan is. Huh? Now I'm feeling what you're feeling because my awareness is there, my attention is there. This video I've made for you. It may be ten years later than this video was made. And you may be the hundredth person watching this video. But I'm feeling what you're feeling. And you also are feeling what I'm feeling if you're looking with attention. And if you watch this video again also, you'll be having the darshan again. And it will continue to clear things out. And continue to bring your consciousness to the place where my consciousness is. This is the notion of Sangha. Association. They talk about Satsanga. When you're doing spiritual practice, you should seek Satsanga, which is good associations with people who are spiritually minded and who encourage us in our own sadhana. But they say you can also have Asanga, which is the bad association with people who are worldly minded. They're not spiritual minded. And they may discourage you in your sadhana. It's natural to have some people around. Your family, you've got to have around. They may discourage you at times. It's important for you to be discouraged from your sadhana so that you can find the inward strength to continue in your sadhana. But generally, if there's an option, if it's a friend, avoid those friends who discourage you in your sadhana. And keep with those friends who encourage you and inspire you in your sadhana. This is the concept of sangha. And so when we are around people who are a good influence, who are doing their own practice and we do our own practice, that practice is many times more powerful. We'll go deeper within because of the association, the sangha. And with a guru, they say your practice can be even much more powerful. And so this video is about darshan. This video is giving the darshan. And you can watch that and feel that and see what happens. And that's great. That's for your mind. But if you really want to go into the practice, do your mantra. Do what practice your meditation, your yoga, whatever it's been. Whatever practice you've been doing every day. Stop this video. Play this video one more time. Keep the sound very low so I'm still there. You're still having the darshan. And do your sadhana. Because in the presence of a spiritual teacher, they say that the Satana has much more shakti. And this is not account of, this is not on account of me or anything that I'm doing, yeah? This is on account of my association with my guru. <laughs> right now I'm focusing inwardly on my guru and I'm feeling his blessings that I've felt. And I'm having awareness of that and projecting it outward and praying to God by the grace of God, that you may feel that and it may help you in your spiritual practice. And so as I go inward and I come to that feeling of bliss and happiness inside, that feeling of inner connection, then uh, that can come out and you can experience that. And you can do that as well. That's what, what we're here to do. We're here to go in, to find the light within and to shine that out for everyone. I don't say that I'm a guru. I just say that I've been around my gurus. 
and that I am very happy to feel their blessing to me right now. And I'm very happy to tell you about that experience that I've had and to pray that God shares this happiness and this bliss with you also. Huh? Don't tell people you're a guru, but always look inside. Huh? You can do the same 